Call the Morganton City Council June 5th, 2017 back to order for our business to begin at 615. I'd like for all to stand and ask Councilman Forrest Fleming to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Our invocation tonight is going to be given by Reverend David Doster, Burke Community Bible Church. David, thank you for being here. <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to be here with you folks. Trust it will be a meaningful evening. If everyone would pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening grateful for your gracious provision, especially the freedom to assemble openly and freely as tonight, to hear from those in leadership as they seek to lead our community. We recognize your sovereignty over our lives and are glad for it as your greater purposes are worked out for your glory and for our flourishing. We commend Mayor Thompson and our councilman to you along with Sandy, Sally Sandy, our city manager, and Louis Vina, our city attorney, and ask on their behalf that you would counsel them as they deliberate and make consequential decisions that have implications for our folks in our community. Grant encouragement and enablement to Ms. Sandy as she presents the 2017-2018 budget. And, O oh Lord, we pray for a productive meeting for all that will be presented, for quality communication both in the speaking and in the hearing, and that things could be achieved in a constructive and beneficial manner. We realize, O oh Lord, that you have ordained government to promote the good of people and to restrain evil. And so we pray for your protection for our city, county, and state law enforcement, firefighters, as well as first responders. We lay these prayers before you, asking for your grace and truth to minister across our community. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Doster. I'd like to introduce our city councilors to my far right, Councilman Forrest Fleming, Louis Vina, our city attorney. I'm Ronnie Thompson, the mayor. Sally Sandy, our city manager. Sidney Simmons, our councilman. Uh, John Cantrell, Mayor Pro Tem. Kelly Russell, our recording secretary. And Becky Brinkley, who's our interpreter for the deaf. We have a resolution tonight for one of our officers. I'd like to read that resolution. It's a resolution for retiring canine Canine Shrek. It was a canine assigned to the Morganton Department of Public Safety. Whereas Police Canine Shrek has faithfully served the Morganton Department of Public Safety since he was placed into service in June 2011, and whereas Shrek has been assigned, Shrek has been assigned to PSO Stacy Huffman for a period of three and a half years of service, and whereas Shrek has been certified by the North American Police Working Dog Association in the following areas for obedience, narcotic detection, tracking, area search, article search, and apprehension, and whereas Shrek has assisted in the location of several missing children and the apprehension of multiple suspects, and whereas Shrek has made numerous finds of controlled substances, and whereas Shrek has rendered a valuable service to the Morganton Department of Public Safety along with the community in which he served, and whereas Shrek has performed the canine responsibilities as a professional police dog with the highest standards, and whereas Shrek was approaching seven years of service and developed physical difficulty carrying out his duties, and whereas Shrek's end of watch came on May 25, 2017, when he had to be humanely put down due to severe health problems, and whereas Section 160A-266D of the North Carolina General Statutes provides in pertinent part that, quote, a city may discard any personal property that possesses a potential threat to the public safety or, or health, end quote. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Morganton as follows. Section 1, Police K-9 Shrek is hereby retired from service. Section 2, the City expresses its appreciation to the late Police K-9 Shrek for his years of faithful service and honors his memory. This resolution is going to be adopted by Morton City Council in open session during a regular meeting held on the 5th day of June 2017. Ronnie Thompson, Mayor, Sally Sandy, City Clerk. I'll ask Councilman Mayor Pro Tim John Cantrell if PSO Huffman and Chief Rector will come forward, please.
of SPSO's Huffman to give us a, a short recap of some of the things Shrek did while he was in service, please. Um, I had Shrek for three and a half years. Um, I took over as his handler for my retired handler, Johnny Cooper. Um, in his six years of service, uh, canine Shrek excelled in drug detection. That was his number one thing. Um, he made over 400 drug arrests, which include the seizure of over 8.29 pounds of marijuana, 2.84 pounds of methamphetamine, 9.5 ounces of crack cocaine, 1.13 ounces of powder cocaine, and 1.86 grams of cocaine, as well as taking over 500 dosage units of illegally used prescription medication. With those seizures, he took with $72,498 and 36 guns as well. When he wasn't, we wasn't on the street doing things, we did a lot of civil things with kids. Numerous times we'd come in here and seen you guys. Um, Trek was a huge asset and is definitely a huge loss. But um, I thank the city for uh, allowing me to get another dog and you'll see him soon. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. We have a presentation of a service pen. Um, personnel committee and the city staff have decided to recognize long-term employees of years of service. Sally, would you like to say something about this, please? Sure. Um, I, I feel like I've been here with all, almost all 30 years with him, but not quite. Uh, Scott Lukadu, our director of public works, we get to honor tonight with a 30-year pen. And it has truly been a pleasure, and every day is a pleasure to get to work with Scott. Um, he values the team, and he values the community, and the contributions that, that his department and the city as a whole make to the community, and I really appreciate that. I'm going to ask Councilman Simmons if he'll present the pen and ask Mr. Luckadoo to say a, a few words, if you would, please. Before you say something, Scott. Thank you very much. I don't see how you made it 30 years because you listen to the council and you got the public to put up with and your employees to put up with. 30 years is unbelievable. <laughs> Where did the time go? Thank you. And uh, this has made possible a promise that for uh, Pam, my wife, and I made each other to live and raise our family in this community where our family and friends are. And, and we are truly blessed and I'd first give God the glory. And uh, council, mayor and council, I thank you for your direction, the decisions you make, the budget you approve, which tonight you will take into consideration, and then authorizing us to execute the contracts and provide the services we provide. Sally, thank you for your management, my chance to be a part of your team and the directors. It's a real privilege to work with professional employees who are just dedicated to quality service and, and taking care of our community. I'd like to thank Teresa Massey, my administrative assistant, who's on the front line receiving the public and every day ensures responsive and appropriate actions for the service requests and the things that we need to do. And, and uh, thank Teresa for all that she does for the city because she's truly a team player. And from her help with the festival to uh, serving on the employee committee, she does an outstanding job and I lift her up. I'd like to thank Tim Clay and Scott Stewart in the street department who uh, set the priorities and manage it the day to day, maintenance of our streets and right of ways, and uh, have great confidence in them and the decisions, and, and uh, thankful for all the work the men do. Richard Cope and the men in sanitation, uh, the tireless effort. When I pull into work every morning, it's a real pleasure to see they're already working and to know that if I need them at midnight, that they're going to be back to fix the trees and cover, recover from the storms. Stephen Mills and, and Jim Pless and the grounds and cemetery. You can't drive through Morgan without feeling a sense of pride for the beauty that they provide this community. And it's just <coughs> a, a wonderful feeling to know that that's a part of our team and what we do. Thank Jeff Waycaster and the men at the garage that take care of all of our equipment um, so that we can do our jobs. Um, it, it's really, really a great team to be a part of. And, where does 30 years go? <clears throat> Where does it go? I can remember in the 70s coming before city council asking for bike lanes. And I can remember working with the school first and then city council hoping for an indoor swimming pool. And then I can remember tearing up Main Street to build green streetscapes mm. and uh, some of the parks we've done and work with the Recreation Commission to build a swimming pool. Uh, a lot of great things I've seen in 30 years for the team to do. And I think we're at a point in history where we've got a better opportunity to prepare for tomorrow than we've ever had. Uh, 
at your will, and, and I look forward to being part of that for a little bit longer. Maybe bring a little wisdom and gray hair to the table. <laughs> Not much hair. <laughs> Not much hair, yes. Yeah. But, I, but I'm, as long as I'm strong and blessed, I hope to continue serving the citizens. Scott, bring us an update on this, the latest sinkhole, please. I know you've dealt with a lot of sinkholes. Mm. So. Well, we, we, do have, we do have a, uh, a <laughs> riser that failed uh, where it collected several stormwater drainage pipes from the downtown area, and that discharged down into a ravine between College Street and uh, North Anderson there at College Street. The main pipe has been repaired and has been covered. Um, that was very successful. There's some support uh, pipes in the works that need to be repaired, but that should be wrapped up in the next day or so. Okay, great. Scott, thanks for all your service. Thank right, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Under public advocacy, we have several events coming. Um, downtown, we have the TGIF concerts continues on Friday nights, the farmer's market on Saturdays and Wednesdays. We have the State of Origin Brew Festival, June the 10th, from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock on the Old Courthouse Square. The presentation of the draft of downtown master plan is on June the 7th at 5 p.m., reception at 5.30. Mm. 5.30. Excuse me, 5.30. Sorry, we It's okay. <laughs> and it's going to be at Comma. That's the presentation at 5.30. The public input meeting for the Recreation Master Plan is on June the 8th, the very next day at 6 p.m. at the Mountain View Recreation Center. The Red, White, and Blue Festival is July 1st through the 3rd at Catawba Meadows Festival Area. And Free Independence Day celebration at Catawba Meadows Park, 5 p.m. until, and the fireworks will be approximately 9.30 weather permitting. So that's what's going on this month. Sally, we have several things on the consent agenda. Uh, four things, I think. Would you cover those, please? We do. Uh, all four items, we would ask that you approve those in one motion, unless somebody would like an item removed and discussed separately. For those of you viewing at home, we have three sets of minutes. Uh, minutes from the May 1st regular meeting, special meetings on February 27th, and a May 1st workshop. Uh, also have a consideration of a project closure resolution and a budget amendment for $3,836 to close out the Water Clear World project, which was a capital project at the water plant. Um, another budget amendment which is good news. Uh, it is to receive ARC grant money for a downtown Wi-Fi project. Uh, the total project is $43,976. $30,783 are federal grant dollars that are coming to the city to do that project. And finally, need you to declare a couple of pieces of equipment that we are replacing. Um, as surplus, a uh, 2007 Freightliner sweeper and a 2008 International Rear Loader garbage truck. Does Council wish any item to be removed from the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimous. Next on the agenda, and actually I missed something, Sally, the North Carolina Municipal Power Agency. Any update for that? There's nothing tonight. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda is the presentation of the proposed budget for fiscal year 2017-2018. Okay, I'm I'll up. I'll turn huh? it over to you. <laughs> okay. And I've got Karen providing technical assistance and support with the PowerPoint. Um, lots of numbers and, and lots of things to hear and lots of things to take in. So we tried to summarize some of those for you so that it will be easier to follow along. As always, our budget document is available here, is available at the library, and is available on our website, um, and has been there since last week. So we ask everybody to take a look. If you have any questions, be sure to give us a call. Uh, we'll go through the presentation tonight, and then recommend to the council that we advertise um, that's a requirement for 10 days. We will call a public hearing that will happen in this room on the budget on Monday, June 19th. That will be at 6 o'clock. So, okay. okay. So, for 17-18, Scott, I have no idea where the years have gone. Um, they roll around faster and faster every year. It seems like I just had this discussion for 16-17. 
So our current budget that we're working under is 72.6, almost $72.7 million. Next year's budget is seven, a little over $73 million, which is a little uh, more than a half a percent increase. Uh, the budget presented to you includes and funds the traditional partnerships and joint opportunities that we have been involved in, some of them for a very long time. Uh, Burke Development Inc., which is our economic development arm uh, for the county, 299000 the library at 238000 uh, the emergency communication center at 240000 a little over 240,000, the Foothills Airport, 47,137, and that's a total of 824,436. So those are, are groups within the county and the airport just within the couple of counties that we do business with on a routine basis. So we'll talk first about the general fund, and that's the fund where government happens. That's the fund where everything happens except for our utilities. Our utilities funds are separate business enterprises. They are legally required to be separate business enterprises and to be self-supporting. The general fund is the fund of community development and, and community opportunities, and it is not um, self-supporting in a fee basis, so that's where property taxes and sales taxes and all those kinds of things are. So for next year, that's a $23 million operations budget. Uh, I mean, 23 total operations is $19.5 million. Capital improvements in those departments, uh, almost $3.6 million. And Powell Bill, which is our street maintenance fund, uh, almost $300,000 next year is proposed for you to consider. So what, what are we looking at in the general fund? Currently our tax rate is 53 cents per $100 value and this budget recommends that you keep that constant and that you do not change that amount. You do not raise taxes. One cent on that tax rate generates about $155,000. So for every penny of that tax rate, it generates about $155,000 in revenue. The total Avalorum revenue proposed for next year is $8.2 million, um, makes up 35% of the general fund. Commonly, people think that, that property taxes pay for everything that happens, and that is just not the case. Um, that $8.2 million doesn't pay for the public safety budget. So there are other revenues that, that happen in, in the general fund that, that make up for the other government services. It does include, and there was discussion and there's an item later to come back up, it does include the discussion of the, I mean the inclusion of the motor vehicle tax, $20 per vehicle one time a year that you adopted last year to replace the privilege license tax that the state of North Carolina did away with uh, several years ago. That will generate about $220,000 in next year's budget, and that is a little bit, cent and a half or so on your tax rate. The general fund includes sales tax, and that is the second largest revenue that happens in the general fund. And sales tax is the money that comes back to our community that is generated as statewide sales occur. And some of that comes back based on what happens within our county, and some of that comes back based on what happens in the entire state. Sales tax has been a huge discussion down at the General Assembly for the last several years. It is still a discussion down there. They have a pretty complicated formula for how they calculate what comes back. And there has been a lot of talk about taking away from the wealthier counties and redistributing to the less wealthy counties. Uh, we did get a little bit of that last year and sales tax increased in Burke County a small part because of that. We are budgeting a 3.5% increase over what we think we're going to collect in the fiscal year we're in right now. The good news, however, I want to tell you that since 2014, sales tax has grown 27%. And that is something that we all pay and that visitors and everyone who comes to this community. And, and that is a direct result of the city of Morganton aggressively seeking retail and aggressively looking to grow the retail base in this county. Because most of the retail that happens in Burke County happens within the city limits of Morganton. The 17,000 taxpayers in the city of Morganton pay for the infrastructure that supports 
a large amount of what generates sales tax in this entire county. And now I'm going to, the next slide, I, I want to explain to everybody what does that really mean because it is a big deal. So for every one dollar in local sales tax, so all the money gets collected, it goes to Raleigh, they ship it back. For every one dollar that comes back to this county as local sales tax dollars, 74 cents of that dollar goes to Burke County. 74 cents goes to Burke County. About 14 cents comes to the city of Morganton, Valdez 3.7 cents, and you see as you go down the list the municipalities and what percentage of that one dollar they get. Morganton's efforts to increase sales tax and to support what it takes to generate sales tax in this community supports Burke County and a large part of their contribution to the Burke County Public Schools. Supports the smaller municipalities that collect more money in sales tax than many of them do in property taxes to provide services in their communities. So what this means is Morganton, as the retail driver, as the group that supports retail development in this county, the success in Morganton is everybody's success. And everybody should be very proud of what Morganton does to support that. And that is important for 90 some thousand people that live in Burke County because it touches every single one of them. And that's my civics lesson for the night. I am very passionate about that and I want people to understand that. <laughs> Amen. Um, <laughs> so, all right, now we'll move on. So I get a little preachy sometimes because I take this stuff pretty seriously. Uh, the downtown tax rate, which is for our special downtown municipal service district, 14 cents. It has been that for years. Would recommend that it stay 14 cents per hundred dollars value. That generates about $8,478. Funds about 17.5% of our Main Street expenditures. I will tell you that that tax is growing and that is a direct result of property owners reinvestments in downtown. Our general property tax is fairly flat and that's a result of you know, larger industries not reinvesting in their capital equipment as fast as it is depreciating. Uh, we do have several things on the horizon where I think that will turn around in the next few years. Next slide, please. Uh, garbage, um, solid waste fee. Uh, we have been charging $10 per month to provide the service that is backyard pickup once a week. In addition to that, the rough trash pickup that happens in this community on the same day as garbage service. I can tell you that if you look around, if you call other places, our garbage service is second to none. The gentleman who is over all that just got his 30 year pin with the city. Um, at the time that we set a fee for garbage collection, we determined that we would fund 75% of that program with fees and 25% of that program with Avalorum taxes. So we're about five years now that we have been at the $10 a month, recommending going to $12 per month. That would generate about $1.3 million, which would pay for right at 75% of that service next year. Um, it is still a bargain at $12 a month with what we get in this community. Our peers around the state and in the region when they talk to you about garbage collection are amazed at what we do here. General Fund capital about right at $3.6 million. We'll tell you that 1.8, almost 1.9 million of that is from grant revenues and those are programmed into this budget. Highlighted projects for next year within the general fund, some replacement of equipment at public safety, some improvements at the comma parking lot, the greenway bridges resurfacing those, those are aging now and we need to uh, fix those surfaces. That is a very used amenity in this community. Air conditioning, both recreation centers, Mountain View and Collett Street. 
a College Street Road diet, looking at taking part of that road and showing how, based on our master plan processes, both for recreation and for downtown, that we can create a more pleasant entrance into town with College Street, showing you how we can take apart take away part of the asphalt that we don't need for traffic and do some other things with that. A downtown greenway connector that would uh, bring in some federal dollars and connect downtown all the way ultimately through the Mountain View area around the new school and then be able to cross over into Catawba Meadows and then the community house upfit for the newly renovated building. This requires using part of our savings. <coughs> A couple of things, and we'll talk in a few minutes about people and personnel issues. Uh, $408,000 is being used from our transition of insurance, which we had planned to do, which we'll talk about later, which would fund the pay and classification study that you approved for us to have done in last year's budget. $270,000 in savings to go toward the capital improvements that we've just talked about, and then appropriating savings of about $145,000, that's less than a cent on the tax rate, would maintain intact your policy of keeping a fund balance of at least 15% of general fund expenditures. The water fund. Um, 5.8 million next year, recommending no increase or no decrease, no change in water rate revenues, I mean in water rates. We'll tell you that our water rates are the lowest water rates in the state of North Carolina. That is not an exaggeration within our population group. And that's something that, that we are very proud of um, and, and hope to keep them low while we are recognizing that we also have aging infrastructure and that we have to reinvest in that infrastructure, that those assets, just like your home, just like your car, just like any of that, have to be maintained and they have to be taken care of. Uh, the capital budget there next year, almost 1.8 million. You see several of the projects there, water tank maintenance, and that's to all of our tanks in our system. Uh, aging line replacement, about 450,000. Some improvements at the Glen Alpine pump station, which is a, a pretty big uh, part of our system. And then some sedimentation process upgrade, a quarter of a million dollars there. <laughs> the electric fund, by far the largest part of our budget, $33.5 million. Um, we have had electric rate decreases, small ones the last two years, uh, recommending no change in electric rates this year, holding them steady, continuing to put some money in a rate stabilization fund for future rate increases that we may get on the wholesale side. Um, we are losing a large electric customer. Uh, that slowdown is, is, as we've just all been noticed, and starting in earnest now. And by December, we feel like one of our largest electric customers will no longer be operating. And we feel good about being able to recommend this budget, losing that customer with no rate increase to the rest of our customers. A capital budget. Um, about 864,000 bucket trucks, some substation upgrades, and continuing the final year of our pole inspections in the city are some of the highlights from that. The wastewater fund, and this is the sewer fund, and this is what um, Mr. Pate was speaking about earlier. Budget for next year recommended at 6.1 million. We are recommending a 10% rate increase. That rate increase is calculated to wait between the fixed part of your charge and the variable part of your charge. To a house that uses about 5,000 gallons of water a month, and that would be an adver average usage for a family of four, unless of course you're my family, it'd be about 10,000 it <laughs> seems like. But for most families of four, um, that would change your monthly bill inside of the city by $2.72, so it would increase by that. Obviously, that has a larger effect on our commercial customers and our industrial customers, and we, we recognize that. Uh, we regret that we need to do this. We have just, over the last handful of years, about five years, spent close to $10 million at the plant alone and are getting ready to do another $9 million project in order to improve our sewer plant. 
It's a very important, obviously, that we can treat our sewer, that we have an efficient operation, and that we have a regulatory compliant operation. Um, I, I will tell everyone that as we have been working over the last several years with the improvements out there, that plant was built in the 70s. It was built with all federal money. That's when they used to give you money to build sewer plants. It's had some minor improvements to it twice of significant value over those years. We are told that if we went out today and we bought property and we built a new sewer plant that would treat our waste, it would be $80 million. $80 million to build a new sewer plant to provide sewer to the city of Morganton and our customers. Since we don't have $80 million, uh, we are trying to do that and take that off and, and bite pieces at the time, chew that elephant up along the way, and keep any rate increases that are necessary, hopefully in a reasonable amount, and spread those out over the life of that plant. Um, the $9 million project, next slide please, that we're getting ready to do is actually $9.7 million and will require an annual debt service over a 10-year period of $1.1 million. So that is the reason for the 10% sewer rate increase that is being proposed. Compass, um, still in the restructure, and I believe it was last month, or was it April? It was April, sorry. Um, April that we heard from our consultant one year into our restructure. Next year's budget is 4.8, almost $4.9 million. As you heard then, and as is happening all over the nation, our video service, the TV portion of our service, uh, is declining. Customers are finding different ways to view TV, and that's a national phenomenon and something that we are not immune to here. Even with that, the programming cost is rising 7% next year alone, and that makes up 44% of this budget just to pay for the programming for the TV options. Great news, the Internet is growing. Um, it is growing at a pretty rapid pace. In about the last nine months, we have added 180 new residential customers to our internet service, 16 commercial customers. Our phone business, um, like most places, uh, phone business is, is, is dwindling on the residential side. More people are using their cell phones, but our commercial side is growing, and we're going to look at those numbers in just a second. Um, two changes here. Effective August 1st, the bundling discount that we currently have, which is $10 a month, will drop to $5 a month. You, you heard last year from our consultant that the bundling discount is out of vogue and recommended that we do away with that, and we decided to do away with that gradually so as not to impact the customer so much at one time. Effective January 1st, the same time that we are going to be having to renegotiate fees for our off-air channels, which is CBS, uh, WBTV, your, your Charlotte stations and such, um, and also the same time that our contracts for our programming are going to increase, recommending a $3 a month increase for the broadcast basic, that's the 20 channel deal from $27.40 a month to $30.40 a month. The basic cable, which is the 78 or 79 channels, 76.63 a month to 82.63, and that is relative to the programming changes. Commercial internet rates are going to drop based on varying amounts based on the speed in which the customers are taking, and, and there's a long list of that in your schedule of fees and charges. Commercial internet rates for fiber that will be based on speed are being established as we are having commercial customers willing to pay for fiber to their business, and we are providing that service. Residential internet rates will not change. Uh, you remember last year we upgraded to our lowest speed being the 50 meg speed. I believe that was last year. Um, residential telephone rates will not change. Commercial telephone rates will increase to $29.99 per line. That's a dollar per line uh, per month. And since the nine months I referred to, we have added 23 commercial telephone customers to our system. 
our IGS fund, that is the fund that the warehouse and garage and our IT department reside in, and that is the fund set up to serve all of us working inside the city. It is 2.1, almost $2.2 million next year. The IT part of that is a million, a million and 79,000. Support contracts are a large part of that, as you see. Uh, we do more and more with IT like every other business and we are appreciative of our IT department continuing with the second phase of our document imaging project. Um, the warehouse 362,000 and garage services 700 almost 725. Fuel purchases are $450,000 of that 725,000. Uh, pay and classification study, we mentioned earlier last year, sitting here at this time, you funded a pay and classification study to look at our pay classes and see how we compare to our marketplace and to our peers. You have received um, a report on that. The consultants did a public presentation on that February 27th at our winter workshop, and there has also been um, some other presentations that you have had from their results during our committee meetings for budget. Um, in order to fund that, $407,541 citywide in all departments is budgeted for next year, and that is funded in this budget with the money from the insurance savings, from converting from being self-insured to being fully insured. There is no COLA increase included in here and no merit increase included in this budget for next year. So what do we have? We have a $73 million budget. Our garbage fee is recommended to go up $2 a month, 10% increase in our sewer fees, and several rate increases in Compass for the video programming and for some commercial telephone. All other rates within Compass remaining the same. No ad valorem tax increase, no electric rate increase, and no water rate increase. So now's the time when everybody's sitting here wondering what movie did I use this year and what movie is that crazy lady up there going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about any movie this year. Um, I found my inspiration somewhere else this year, not in a quote from a, from a movie. So I'm going to share with you my inspiration and why I think that this is a responsible budget and is a budget that is appropriate for the city of Morganton, most importantly for the community of Morganton. So a couple weeks ago, spent a whole week off and on with the downtown master plan folks and the rec master plan folks and sat in sessions, I listened to the public talk about things they would like to see, things they thought worked here, things they didn't. We're gonna have a big presentation on Wednesday night at Common. I hope everybody will come to that on those initial results. But what I heard over and over and over again was a successful downtown puts people first. Not cars, but people. So I got to thinking about that people first thing. And you know, I've told you before, we're in the people business. We are public servants. And so to, to quote Kathy Bailey, who I think is a pretty sharp lady, uh, she likes to say that at Blue Ridge Healthcare Morganton that they are friends serving friends and caring for friends. Well, we are public servants and we're people and we are serving people serving people in our community, people that visit our community, people that invest in our community. So I said people first really for us means community first. And, and that's why I say that this is responsible for our community. So in taking that idea, I said what does community really mean? So I used a dictionary and I used like the book version of it, something my kids don't even know what it is. And I looked up what would Webster say community is? And one of the definitions that I found is a unified body of individuals who have a joint ownership or participation. And I thought, yep, that's us. That's Morganton. So I decided that this year I would take my inspiration and give us our charge for this budget and next year and looking into the future from community. I counted, I used the word community or a version of it 32 times in the 12 page written budget message that I have just talked to you about tonight. 
32 times. So why does that really matter? Is that just a crazy lady up there talking or does it really matter? I think it really matters. And I think it matters because Morganton is a community where mediocrity has never been accepted. We're a community where we take pride in our safety, our appearance, our diverse culture, our activities, a community where partnership, participation, and input is embraced, a community with excellent services, a community that strives to offer something for everyone. Not everything is for everybody, but we hope to have something for everyone, and a community that most importantly isn't satisfied with just today, but we invest in our future. So how does that, what does that mean for this budget? That means that if we take this community as our inspiration, it will allow us to think broadly, to keep the big picture in mind, to achieve success through our ownerships of our communities and, and our challenges and everything about it, and our partnerships, how we work with others to achieve what we are and who we want to be, to embrace the future, not just in our words, but really in our actions. And I think that is really what this budget allows us to do. Scott talked earlier that we're, we're at a point where I think we have some real opportunities for our future, some opportunities that are once in a lifetime opportunities and things that it's very important how we decide what we do with that for everybody in this community. I hope this budget is the beginning of that and the roadmap. I have to say to you, I really appreciate the help of all those people sitting over there in that corner, um, the department directors and everything that they put into putting this budget together, the research, their commitment to making it responsible, uh, the employees who do the work. I have to say to these two people, to Karen Duncan, the finance director, and, and to Michael Chapman, uh, I could not do it without you. Your commitment to making it right, the time that you spend, the dedication that you have to getting the information, to working with all of them, to answering my nutty questions, and then to give it back in this document that actually ultimately makes sense. I really, really appreciate that. So to the council, I appreciate the time that you have spent going through this, the time that you have spent working in committees on what is included in here, the time that you spend thinking about your decisions and why they matter for the future. And I really hope that as we consider this and look toward that, that we remember that it's because of the community that we do all this. Sally, thank you very much. Council, you've heard our budget summary. It's time for us to take action. Do I have a motion? I move to call for a public hearing on the proposed budget on Monday, June the 19th, 2017 at 6 o'clock p.m. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Motion passes unanimous. Okay. Under old business, we had the consideration of removing the $20 vehicle tax. Uh, a motion was made by Councilman Simmons to remove the $20 a year vehicle registration fee from the budget. I seconded that motion for purposes of discussion. That is on the agenda now. We don't have to have another motion. Uh, any discussion about that decision? All in favor of the motion to remove the $20 vehicle tax, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, please say aye. Aye. Motion is 2-2. Two, two. The motion does not pass. Under new business, we have a public hearing to consider rezoning a 20.52 acre portion of a 37.42 acre track of property located at 925 North Green Street from low intensity district, the LID district, to high intensity district submitted by Nathan uh, Ted, agent for Crescent Communities. I'm going to ask uh, City Attorney Louis Vina to take that, please. Actually, I believe I'll Philip. defer to uh, Philip Luckadoo, okay. our planning director, since this is coming to you from uh, planning and zoning. And he's prepared to address that. Philip, you're on. Evening, Mr. Mayor, members of uh, council. What we have is, is a, and, and Chad, if I can get you to bring up the, the first map. 
this is that's not. I yet. think that's if you'll if you'll skip forward to um, I think maybe the fourth. Next, there we go. Okay, so what we have is is a rezoning request to rezone a portion of this track that's outlined in blue uh, from HID or actually from LID to HID and, and LID being the low intensity district and HID being the high intensity district. Um, the property is located as you can see it's it's um, just off of uh, North Green Street in the northwest section of town and it is a, a a portion of the entire the entire tract in blue is a 37.42 acre tract and what we are looking at Chad if you can go to the next um, parcel we're looking at the, um, the small uh, in I guess in in purple 20.52 acres and so currently the property is split zoned and that that occurred during the, the original zoning associated with this uh, new new zoning ordinance and so what we're looking at is is a request to rezone the entire portion to HID. <clears throat> this um, project was considered by the Planning and Zoning Commission on the, at their May 11th meeting. And they recommended uh, by unanimous vote for approval by City Council. And the staff has reviewed the objectives of the Mission 2030 plan, which basically says that this should all be um, the high intensity commercial and also recommend approval of, of this plan. Philip, um, the larger triangle in red, it, uh, this is going to make all of that HID now, correct? Correct. Okay. That is correct. And Philip, the typical business that would be located in that area would be what? If you think of, uh, of HID in a commercial sense, HID allows a range of uses, one of those being single family detached residential. So the possibility could be that, but, but if you think about it under the old zoning terms as general business, so like your Walmart neighborhood store is zoned uh, HID, any uh, convenience store, any um, shopping center, it's basically a general commercial zoning district. Thank you. I would say so. Okay. I'd like to call on a public hearing to talk about the zoning of this property from from uh, low intensity to high intensity. This time it is a public hearing. Would anyone like to speak on this motion? Yes, please come forward, state your name and your address. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott Coley and I live at 418 Alexander Avenue, Morganton, North Carolina. And I am a co-president of Historic Burke Foundation, which owns several historic properties that are set there fairly close to this location. And uh, I wanted to uh, address you guys um, in regard to that lo the location that's being zoned and the opportunity to um, connect the historic properties of the Quaker Meadows um, Cemetery, um, the Charles McDowell House, and Freedom Park because this uh, piece of property um, is contiguous, could be a contiguous um, trail type thing. So um, as part of Historic Burke, um, we would like to um, make a qualified statement of support uh, for the rezoning of this tract. The development of this 37.42 acre site as a high intensity district under Morganton's new zoning plan provides a great opportunity to connect two nationally recognized historic properties to the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail in Morganton, also known as the Catawba River Greenway. We more specifically um, would like to have sensitive development of this site um, and try to connect the Charles McDowell House to the Quaker Meadow Cemetery and then on to the Freedom Park um, and Freedom High School locations through a tractive walkway system um, to be part of the Greenway and um, we strongly support the connections as well as the sensitive development of this very important site within the Morganton River District. Some of the greatest improvements of Morganton's new zoning plan 
or in the river district, the development of beautiful, convenient walkways within the New River District will demonstrate thoughtful stewardship and enhance the um, district for generations to come. Um, from a personal point of view, I've moved to Morganton in 1996 and I shortly became involved with the Sharp Burke Foundation. This is my third stint in involvement as president um, and I became president shortly after around 98, I guess. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the director of Historic Natchez fan Foundation about that time, um, not knowing what I would do with my stint as president of Historic Burke Foundation. And I gave him a spill of the history of Burke County and Morganson. And after he heard this, he looked at me and said, you know, that Revolutionary War stuff, that's what you need to focus your time as president I mean, with Historic Burke Foundation. And this area is that history. Mm -hmm. So it's important to be good stewards, as I said, of this area. And if we can connect Freedom High School, which is named because of this steward, this time period of time that when this area was a patriotic center um, during the American Revolution, um, it would be wonderful um, for our community and for the history of, of what happened here. Um, also, um, Historic Burke Foundation owns the Charles McDowell House, and we are now getting ready to put a new roof on the house um, because of a grant, and like to thank the city uh, for helping with getting this grant take, to take place. Um, as everyone knows, it owns a structure, a home or anything, or any type of building. You don't have a good roof, you don't have a good structure, um, and the roof needed to be, needs to be replaced and is going to be replaced um, starting next Monday. And uh, I'd like to personally thank um, Russ and Philip Luckadoo and uh, Louis V. Nye for help with that, as well as all the other um, Morganton City staff. So thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, Philip, I'll ask you to come back up too, uh, please. Uh, can we incorporate trails in the high intensity district? That's, that is feasible and doable, correct? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, it, it sounds to me like it makes great sense if we have people walking, uh, that's where they need to be, and it would be great for them to, to view that whole section out there. Right. And, and any conversations that we have with anyone uh, relative to development of that property, we, we make sure that we mention that, that those connections are uh, important to us and in, in part of our trail system development uh, in the future. Walking and biking. Walking and biking. Not just walking. That's correct. Thank you, Philip. Anyone else like to speak? This is the public hearing. It's your time to speak. Please come forward, state your name and address. Good evening, Council. My name is Nathan Tidd, as you recognize from the agenda there. I'm with Kimley Horn and Associates at 200 South Tryon Street, Charlotte. I uh, just wanted to say thank you for, for hearing our um, item tonight and ask for your approval. Uh, and also let you know I'm available for any questions. And with regard to the use of multimodal, multimodal paths through the development, um, Crescent has committed to designate space within rights of ways uh, to make those uh, possible. Thank you. Here for any questions. Anyone have any questions for him? Okay, anyone else like to speak at the public hearing? I'll call the public hearing closed. Council, what is your desire? I move we adopt an ordinance that amends the zoning map of the city of Morganton to rezone parcels from their present low intensity district zoning classification to a high intensity district zoning classification based on compliance with Mission 2030 plan and recommendation by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion by council? Not all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimous. Next, we have a public hearing to consider rezoning approximately 54.54 acres located at 526 Cosby Road from exclusive industrial district, the EID district, to medium intensity district, MID, submitted by Howard Poole trustees. Uh, yeah. I'll call a public public hearing to order. Philip, would you like to give us some history on this, please? Yes, sir. 
Mr. Mayor, members of, of council. If we can go to that first map again. This is, again, three tracks that are in single ownership. Uh, you have a, a large tract of vacant land, which is 45.22 acres. You have a smaller tract, which is 11.03 acres. Both, again, both are vacant. And then an even smaller tract, uh, which is, not, uh, which is um, 0.79 acres and contains a, a brick house. The um, <coughs> staff uh, reviewed the mission or objectives of the Mission 2030 plan. And the Mission 2030 plan in the future land use map, if we can, uh, if we can look at this, uh, designates that to be exclusive industrial district. Philip, before, I, before we continue, just for the people at home, they probably can't read that. Uh, keep the slide up, please, Chad. Uh, that is the exit right there is the Cosby Road exit, exit 98. Is that, that is correct. Okay, just so people can get their point of reference, that purple is the landing question, correct? That is correct. And okay. if we can go, Chad, to the next. Yeah, the next slide. Uh, to the next map. Track is, if you see on here, it's tracks A, B, and C okay. designated on here. It's, and it straddles Cosby Road. Some are on one side and some are on the other. Mm -hmm. That's correct. The, the 11 acre tract is on the um, south side of Cosby Road and, and the uh, 45 acre and the 0.79 acre on the north side. Of okay, it. thank you. Mm -hmm. So in reviewing that, um, the staff looked at it and it does recommend for exclusive industrial district. And so we, we took it to the Planning Commission and, and Planning Commission held a, Planning Zoning Commission held a public hearing uh, on May 11th. And, and they looked at it and they considered staff's um, review of the 2030 plan. They also took in public input. And then they, um, based on the, uh, what they heard from staff and what they heard from residents and, and uh, the applicant, they made a motion uh, to recommend to council, unanimous motion to recommend to council to approve this request from, uh, from the EID or exclusive industrial district to the medium intensity district. And this was based on uh, issues with topography, uh, lot dimensions, and access difficulties. And so um, this, again, was the unanimous decision of the Planning Commission after they had taken in, uh, in consideration, all factors. Okay, thank you, Philip. Again, this is a public hearing to consider this rezoning. Would anyone like to speak? Yes, please come forward, state your name and address. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Stephen West. I currently reside at 30 Stony Ridge in Asheville. I am the owner of a property adjacent to the proposed uh, or the property that is being proposed as being rezoned. And I uh, uh, hope that it is approved uh, because my property is MID and the this gap that would otherwise be industrial does not seem to fit what needs to happen. So I urge the uh, council to approve this uh, rezoning request. Thank you for visiting the best town in, in, in North Carolina, okay? <laughs> well, I, I, I agree. I moved here from Santa Barbara in 1989 uh, to uh, start a business here and uh, enjoyed uh, Morganton immensely. I used to live at, uh, on Riverside Drive and I developed a factory at 1915 Jamestown Road, which is still there. I've retired, uh, sold the business, and, and uh, my wife uh, was from Asheville, and so I thought I'd better move to Asheville. I understand. <laughs> so, Those long-distance relationships, they're tough. I understand. Thank you. And, and if I may ask a question, Mr. West, so your, your, your land that you own is part of that island of MI, what's now an island of MID that that is correct. If this was, uh, if I have 2.4 acres uh, that abuts the, I guess you'd say the southwest corner of the uh, parcel yeah. being proposed for rezoning. And if it gets You're rezoned, you'll no longer be an island of MID out that, there. That's right? correct. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak concerning this rezoning? That's a good point. Seeing no hands. Public hearing to be closed. I'd like to be excused from this vote because okay. of family relationships. Well, our clerk note that uh, Mayor Pro Tem.
John will be excused from the vote. Well, you'll need to take a vote on that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. It's recusal because of a personal family interest in yes. the property or adjoining property. I need a motion to excuse Councilman uh, Cantrell from the vote. Do I have such a motion? So move. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. John, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, Council. Uh, what is the motion wishes of the Council? Motion to confirm that the request map amended are in compliance with the Morgan and Mission 2030 goals and objectives given practical con consideration identified by the Planning and Zoning Commission. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion concerning that? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimous. We have a second motion. Motion to adopt an ordinance that amends the zoning map of the city of Morgan to rezone parcels from the exclusive industrial district zoning classification to medium intensity district zoning classification. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to ask a question. Okay. Uh, what What is the real purpose that the property owner has to uh, that they're requesting a rezoning? I'll ask uh, council. Well, I would first note that in considering a rezoning, the potential use of the property is not normally an appropriate line of inquiry. Um, I know that question is often asked. But the, the real question is whether uh, rezoning is appropriate under our ordinance uh, and under state law. And the uses would be whatever is allowed under the, in this case, uh, MID district, frankly. I, I don't know if a plan has been presented. Philip may know. Just if I could expand on that a little bit. That there, there has been no plan that has been submitted. Uh, the, the MID zoning district, like all of our zoning districts, is meant to be, it, it, if I could give just a little bit of a, a, of a primer on this code, just for, for some of those that, that may not know. but. The, the former code was a, a, a traditional Euclidean zoning ordinance, which meant that you had a list of permitted uses in certain zones. And the only hurdle that a person had to cross in, a, in a getting approval was they had to be on one of those uses. So that left a wide range of, of possibilities anytime a rezoning came up. This code is more based on character. And so what happens is, is it opens up the, the array of permitted uses, but it qualifies it. So in this case, in an MID, you can have single family residential, you can have multifamily, you can have commercial, if you front on certain types of roads. So that, so that allowable commercial use is tempered by the, the classification of the road. In this case, I believe it is a uh, collector road. So it would have a lot, a lot less intense type uses than say if it was on uh, North Green Street. So we don't have a, a exact plan. Um, indications um, indications have been that it could be residential of some sort, but there's again there's been no no exact plan. But it would be a if there were commercial, it would be tempered by our zoning code. And so each and, and beyond the road classification, each use would have certain conditions placed on it to ensure that it was compatible with the surrounding properties. This change in zoning makes it more marketable. Is that correct? That is my understanding from the testimony of the, at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Well, if I owned it and I'd want to, <laughs> and I wanted to sell it, I'd want it as marketable as I could get it. <laughs> Philip, thank you for it's always an education when you come to speak with us. Thank you so much, <laughs> Councilman Fleming. Did that help help a little? I hope everybody understands it. Okay. Any further discussion? We have a motion on the floor to amend the zoning map to rezone parcels uh, from EID to MID. Any further questions? If not, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Again, Councilman uh, Cantrell uh, does not have to vote. Okay. Next is the consideration of a neighborhood-wide street limit of 25 miles an hour in the residential neighborhood that includes Britton Drive, White Pine Lane and Glendale Street. Uh, Louis, will you want to sure. take that, please? I, I'll, I'll be glad to. Um, 
Council may remember you've done a couple of these before. We did uh, one just a few months ago with a neighborhood down off uh, South Sterling. This is a similar situation, uh, a neighborhood where the speed limit is not specifically posted, so it's the, the, under our ordinances, it's automatically assumed to be 35 miles an hour. Uh, after study by the city engineer and the planning department, uh, they have looked at this area and there were requests from some of the residents especially on Britain Drive I think um, you have a map attached I don't know if that's on Chad's or if he can bring that one up or not uh, but you see this is off Carbon City Road um, there are actually three streets uh, Britain Drive is actually kind of parallels Carbon City between White Pine Drive and Glendale Street which both of which run perpendicular to, to uh, Carbon City, and then Britain is in between them. It, it, and of course, White Pine and Glendale are both dead ends. They just go down to the, uh, into the woods there near the river and end, and Britain Drive is in between. Uh, they're residential, there's certainly no through traffic, um, and so the determination is that a 25 mile an hour speed limit would be appropriate. Uh, there is a, a lot of pedestrians along there, there are children, uh, it seemed appropriate to consider this area as a, a neighborhood that uh, could handle a three, uh, could handle a 25 mile an hour speed limit. I, b I uh, believe there are, no, there are no sidewalks either. I'm pretty sure. Uh, no sidewalks. I'm pretty sure there's not. Relatively right. narrow That's streets That's another reason to, to yes. reduce it. Yep, that is true. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? Move to implement an umbrella 25 mile per hour speed limit for the neighborhood that includes Britton Drive, White Pine, White Pine Lane, and Glendale Street, and the installation of the appropriate neighborhood speed limit 25 mile per hour sign. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Consideration of ordinance establishing a speed limit of 25 miles an hour for the portion of Vine Arden Road North, north of the Kirksey Bypass. Louis, would you please take that? Sure. A somewhat similar, but not exactly the same situation. Vine Arden, of course, on the other side of Kirksey Bypass, runs all the way down to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and there are residences along it. Uh, it's a fairly narrow road, as you know. Obviously, it dead ends at the plant. Um, the interesting thing is that Vine Arden on the near side of Kirksey Drive all the way back to Rocky Ford is already a 25 mile an hour <laughs> limit. Um, so the engineering suggestion here is that it would be better uh, given the neighborhood uh, and given the nature of the road to also lower the speed limit on Vine Arden to 25 miles an hour. On the far side of Kirksey Drive it already is on the near side. What's the pl pleasure of the council? Motion to authorize a reduction of the speed limit from the current 35 mile an hour speed limit and establish a new 25 miles per hour speed limit posted on this section of Vine Arden Road. Second. second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Motion passes. And we have a consideration of a neighborhood wide speed limit of 25 miles an hour in the residential neighborhood that includes Kimberly Drive and North Fox Street. City Attorney, I'll ask one more time. One more time. This is a little more like the one in Carbon City, uh, although it's a more in-town neighborhood. Um, basically, all of this is off of Alexander Avenue. Uh, North Fox Street comes off, and then Kimberly Drive runs from North Fox Street back around to Alexander to kind of make a, a loop. Uh, again, no through traffic. These are narrow, completely residential streets. Uh, there have been requests from um, residents who were concerned about this. A lot of pedestrians, a lot of walking along this track. Again, uh, no sidewalks available on these streets. Um, obviously, this is another situation with a default 35 mile an hour limit because it's not otherwise posted. Uh, and after study, engineering recommended that a 25 mile an hour speed limit in this neighborhood would again be appropriate. It's a motion of the will of the council, please. I've got, a, I've got a question for Louis. Excuse okay. me, John. Yeah. 
Should I excuse myself from this vote? I've got relatives that live on this street. I, well, I understand that, but I guess I my opinion to. is no. I don't <laughs> okay. think I don't think you need because it, it it's it doesn't affect the value of property or any asset. I, I don't see how that. Continue everyone's on. interested. And, in and my mother-in-law used to live on that corner. So. <laughs> we can't lose more than one of you now. We don't have enough to vote. So I move we implement an umbrella 25 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, for the neighborhood that includes Kimberly Drive and North Fox Street and the installation of the appropriate neighborhood speed limit 25 mile an hour signs. Second. A motion and a second. It's a good thing that we all don't live in one neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Well, maybe I should excuse myself from the previous one since I grew up in Carbon City. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Motion passes unanimous. Next on our agenda, consideration of the appointments for boards of commission, the Human Relations Commission, that's a mayoral appointment. Um, I will reappoint Mary Wright and appoint Gerald McBrayer to the Human Rights Relations Commission for a term to expire June 3rd, 2020. Council, do we need a nope. vote on that? That was your appointment. Your, your appointment. appointment motion. We have the consideration of appointment to the Board of Adjustment, and this is a, uh, a council. Uh, Sally, do you want to talk about the Board of Adjustment, please? Uh, and the people who applied? Uh, well, we don't have anybody who applied. <laughs> well, Susan. Uh, Susan, is Susan, Susan Shelor, who has been serving, yes. would like to continue serving. Okay. And, and she's a relatively new member on there and came with experience in serving on planning boards and board of adjustment before moving to this community. Okay. And What's she was appointed to fill a vacancy. Right. And now that term, though, that she was appointed to fill is, is running out. Okay. I move we reappoint Susan Shallower to the Board of Adjustment for the term to expire June 3, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. Next is the consideration of appointments to the Cable Television Commissions. Hallie. And I, I believe that is council appointments. Yes. And we actually have um, three folks who are willing to be reappointed to that board. Jim Cates, Barry Stock, and Dennis Caldwell. What's the wish of the council? I move to reappoint uh, Jim Cates, Barry Stock, and uh, Dennis Caldwell to the uh, Cable Television Commission for a term to expire June 3rd, 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimous. The next is the appointment to the Community Appearance Commission. That is a mayoral appointment, and I want to reappoint Bill Allman and Martha Franklin to the Community Appearance Commission for terms to expire June 3rd, 2002, 2020, and appoint James Bagley to the Community Appearance Commission for a term to expire June 3rd, 2020. Next, we have a consideration for appointments to the Main Street Advisory Commission. This is a mayoral appointment, and I move to reappoint Diane Ryle, Judy Willis, Ben Belton, Bryant Lindsay, and Eddie McJimsey to the Main Street Advisory Commission to, for terms to expire June 3rd, 2020, and to appoint Jennifer Whittington to fulfill a term to expire on June 3rd, 2018. Next, we have consideration of appointments to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and this is a council appointment. Mm -hmm. Sally? It is. Um, and you have um, a, a mixed thing here, too. You have two folks who wish to be reappointed uh, to additional terms, and that is Don Smith and Rick Lingerfelt. And then you have two folks who have expressed interest to go into the third seat. Uh, David Kirk has decided that he does not, is unable to continue serving on that board. Um, you have the applications of the two uh, folks who are interested in that. And one of those has served on this board in the past and has indicated that he would like to serve again. And that one is Mark Scholar. Okay. What's the pleasure of the council? I move we Reappoint Don Smith and Rick Lingerfeld to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the terms to expire June 3, 2020. Okay. Uh, second. Sec motion is second. Any discussion on those? If not, all in favor signify saying aye. 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 Motion passes. 
I move we appoint Mark Scholler to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the term to expire June 3, 2020. Second. The motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. And we have the Recreation Advisor Commission. This will be a council appointment. Uh, we have uh, people who are coming off. They can't su serve successive terms. So we need to, we have one, two, three, four, five, appoint, uh, five people interested for three seats. I move to appoint uh, Mike Hassan, Thomas Reap, and Scott Davis to the Recreation Advisory Commission for a term to expire June 3rd, 2020. Do we have any further nominations? I'd like to uh, nominate Chris Witherspoon. Okay. Um, hmm. Council? <laughs> okay, well, let's Vote see. On one Actually, I believe we got, yes, we've got a motion to appoint those three. Is that the way you made it? Yeah. And has that been seconded? We do not have a second. Okay, and then we've got a motion to appoint one. <laughs> All right. Uh, has that been seconded? <laughs> has not been seconded. Uh, Lloyd, what should we do in this case? <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have legal counsel. Well, um, you got a motion, would, you need to vote on the motion. Well, no, not seconded. unless it's been seconded. seconded. Neither motion's been seconded. Um, There's got to be a way to do this. Well, yeah, you could. Uh, I didn't realize this was going to be a problem here. I mean, y you could take them one at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's just uh, my suggestion. You could just go down. If somebody wants to appoint one, throw that name out, and if it gets seconded, you can vote on it. I mean, you don't have to do it that way. Hey, uh, I'll withdraw my motion. Uh, <laughs> if given the opportunity to make another motion. Uh, you have that opportunity. Sure. Okay. I move to appoint uh, Mike Hassan to the Advisory Commission for a term to expire June 3rd, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, that one is in. That's now, it. I move to uh, appoint uh, Thomas Reap to the Recreation Advisory Committee for a term to expire June 3rd, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of Thomas Reap, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. I move, I move we appoint Chris Witherspoon to the Recreation Advisory Committee for the term to expire 23rd, June 3rd, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. That wasn't too bad, was it? I wasn't too bad. Uh, That's why we always put it at the end of the meeting. <laughs> Sorry. Is there anything else to come before council for the June 6th meeting? If not, we are adjourned.